The Green America Hometown Tour is brought to you by Atrion IT Technology, Rhode Island College, Cardi's Furniture, and the Arpin Group. I'm Peter Arpin with Renewable Now, and we are on tour in Rhode Island's second largest city, a city dominated by the major gateway in and out of this state, Warwick. Like all Rhode Island cities and towns, Warwick has a very long history. In fact, Warwick was decimated during King Philip's War and was the site of the Gaspi Affair, a significant prelude to the American Revolution. Warwick is also home of Revolutionary War General Nathaniel Greene, George Washington's second in command, and the Civil War hero of the Battle of Gettysburg, General George S. Green. In 1772, Warwick was the scene for the first violent act against the Crown. In what was to be called the Gaspi Affair, local patriots boarded HMS Gaspi, a revenue cutter charged with enforcing the Stamp Act of 1765 and the Townsend Act in Narragansett Bay, where smuggling was common. It was here that the first blood of the American Revolution was spilled when commanding officer of the Gaspi was shot while resisting taking his ship. Today, the village of Gaspi and Green State Airport play very important roles in Warwick's historical status and in the continuing importance of this city. When we come back from our break, I will introduce you to the current mayor and administration who have been in office since 2000. We are back on Renewable Now. I'm Peter Arp, and I am here in Warwick with Mayor Scott Abedesian. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, Peter. Planning Director Bill De Pasquale. Bill, Speed. thank you so much, and welcome to Renewable Now. Thank you. Now, I've heard rumors, and I know politicians get a little nervous, but don't get nervous. Is it true that the last time you lost an election, it was back, I think, in high school? And was it, for, was that, is that true, or? Uh, very close. Uh, I lost my first election for the city council in 1988 by about 100 votes. Oh, and you've been and, a man uh, on a mission ever since. Came then. back in 90 <laughs> and uh, uh, have been elected every year since 1990. Oh, all right. The, um, Warwick obviously has a, a very long history, 360 years, I think, from some of our research. You've been mayor for about half of those, I heard. Yeah, it seems <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, since 2000. Yes. Uh, what are the changes in Warwick from then to now? Well, obviously, the biggest change is um, what's happened um, infrastructure wise. If you look now, uh, we have obviously the people mover which is one of the largest uh, structures that people will see when they come through Warwick and they see the changes there uh, that was actually planned and, and brought out uh, brought about by some discussions on uh, taking advantage of the uh, one of the closest air to rail links in the country so that's one that we actually worked on and planned along with the Appenock bypass which um, will start later this year uh, but then the infrastructure has also changed been a lot of um, unanticipated ways, such as I know um, at one of your shows we'll talk about what happened after our floods. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so there's been major changes to our wastewater treatment facilities, there's been uh, expansion uh, and renovation of the Warwick Mall uh, to change our infrastructure there, uh, Nyla Hotel, uh, other developments in and around Pontiac, and, and changes that happened based on flooding yep. uh, that allowed us to have some infrastructure improvements as well. So I'd say basically the city looks very different today than it did 12 years ago. Bill, you have a lot going on. We're going to get into this in future shows and, and a little bit today. A lot of things going on around the, what they call the station district, mm -hmm. Appenog, changes like that. What do you consider, though, and, and obviously we're very focused on sustainability and positive changes, reduced energy, reduced waste, and things, not only for cities, but for businesses and peoples, people and nonprofits. What do you, though, consider the most important thing going on in this city right now? Well, I wouldn't point to one project because I think they're all interrelated. And as I call it, I call it a sustainability umbrella because it covers many uh, aspects of what the people in this city believe leads to a good quality of life. So TOD on its own can't really stand alone. 
but if it's connected with connectivity, both pedestrian and uh, in, in uh, biking, to say Appenog and the redevelopment of Appenog, then you have a holistic approach. What we've done is after the March uh, floods, March of 2010 floods, and given the TOD, Appenog, and Connecticut, the mayor instructed our department to you know, scrap everything. Let's take a look at how we can take advantage of, of today's you know, market. And what we did is actually establish both the Connecticut Village and Appenog Village overlay districts, a true mixed use community. So what we're doing is trying to take these communities that were established in the 18th and 19th century and bring them back. And a when true we talk walkable. about mixed use, we're talking about what? Commercial, residential, walking, Abs biking. Absolutely. A self transportation system. A self-contained right. unit. And I think most communities have looked at in the past trying to figure out corridors that they said we're only going to have this here or only going to have this here mm -hmm. and realize that that might not be the best way of approaching it and that a better mix of all your uses in one neighborhood uh, allows for a better development of that neighborhood. Well, it's yeah. interesting too in the in the research we've done on the city, you've got some tremendous resources mm -hmm. and that includes and we're going to talk about being here at the airport and in and around the airport and the station district, but uh, old buildings, beaches, right. you know, beautiful old Rocky Point that has a you know, mm -hmm. tremendous history and sure. so forth. As it relates though to being here in and around the airport, we're going to get into it in more detail in a future show, but mm -hmm. what are, what's the core of what's going to happen and, and how big of an area are we talking about around green? We, okay. I'll just tell you what I think the vision is mm -hmm. that we have um, an ability to take advantage of um, a great regional airport. Um, rail service that now is connected to the MBTA um, out of Boston. So the, the interlink is done, the people movers right. done, there's some infrastructure here. And right. we also have the confluence of 95, 146, 295, everything, uh, 37, uh, all those elements close, trying to work RIPTA into that mix as well to say there, there are other ways to get you here. Um, and so we tried to look at here are our assets. Uh, and the governor talks about it all the time. Let's look at what our assets are and how do we use them and how do we expand on them, how do we enhance them. Um, so we tried to look at what our assets were and said, okay, we have all this right here. Now what do we do to market that uh, to allow us to be more effective, more efficient, and to move things forward? And in particular, yeah, the supportive design of supportive land uses that build off the $267 million infrastructure we have here to build value, value proposition. Do you know that within the TOD, it's about 8 million people within 75 mile radius. Mm. Do you know along the Northeast Rail Card and Northeast as a whole, there's 14 million households that potentially want to be located next to a, a, a rail station. That is an, an entire market and as a market goes, the Northeast region is the largest uh, gross domestic project uh, product per capita than any other region in the country. So it's got, it's got the ability to, to be Capture that. We're gonna uh, follow up on that. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Maureen Carey, publisher of Rhode Island Natural Awakenings Magazine. I'm excited about our new partnership with Renewable Now. Natural Awakenings is a free monthly publication committed to providing services and information to our community to improve your quality of life physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You'll find cutting edge information on natural health, nutrition, fitness, personal growth, green living, and the products and services that support a healthy lifestyle. You can find our magazine at health food stores, coffee shops, yoga studios, libraries, and wherever free publications are generally seen. We are locally owned, locally produced, and supporting the Rhode Island economy naturally. You can find us online at rinaturalawakenings.com. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's gonna get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power 
of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at actionheroalliance.com. Thanks for staying with us. We are here in Warwick with Mayor Adesian and Bill. Thank you so much again for being with us. The, we were just talking a little bit about the uh, station district, some of the things that are going to happen. But, and again, we'll get into it in, in, a, in a future show in more detail. But if you see happen what you expect, is it going to be a lot of retail? Is it going to be residential and a high end? What is this district going to it, see? It'll be truly mixed use. We have a master plan, and that master plan really had a concentration of bringing in a residential component to this district. What we found is TODs throughout the country are less successful if they don't have a residential component. So we're trying to cultivate a residential is component. Is that within two, two blocks, that is blocks, within, 20 blocks? That is a great question. It's within a five minute walk, to five to ten minute walk. The limit is one quarter to one half mile radius from the TOD. It'll be a true mixed use, so you'll have supportive retail services on the first floor, build that excitement, build that livelihood. You'll have office, business, and residential. And we're also looking at it as a business conference center. Not a convention center, but a conference center, something that we can work with Providence on and may establish some kind of um, you know, livelihood there in business community that may be a home for headquarters. Uh, in the future. Yep, and it's a good it, it's a good point. But let's move over to Appenog. Sure, a village, very old, historic. Things are going to change. What will change, and and will that be mixed use at all? Will that yes. be? Well, we we rezoned um, Appenog in Connecticut last year uh, to a village zoning concept so that we could encourage that kind of mixed use. Um, but the most um, probably visible change of the infrastructure that people will see in Appenog starting soon. It'll be later this fall, they'll start the construction of the Appenog Bypass Project, which will put together a series of roundabouts that will move traffic from Route 5 over to Tollgate Road, thereby leaving Appenog to be reclaimed as, as an actual village. So, so it moves a lot of the traffic? 25,000 trips per day down to 5,000. Right. Really? In really? front of Post Road, increase of 80 parking spaces to get that, that, that business development right. back in the traditional center. And is that over five years? Uh, is that what, oh, what it starts at 20, uh, 2012. It, it has an end date of 2015, the so, project. And the goal is, you know, we need to, re we want to recapture what makes Appenog so special. And, um, you know, there was uh, a lot of talk many, many years ago about uh, changing Appenog into the form it is now. And that was a temporary traffic fix that was put together uh, many years ago, I get in trouble whenever I say how many because <laughs> people realize that um, here was the, the temporary fix that ended up becoming a, a long-term problem. You know, and there was some uh, video of uh, a reporter driving around that bypass, and you can see how difficult it is if you don't know where you're going. And once you're beyond all of um, the places that you're looking for, there's no easy way to back around and, and to find Appenog again. So our goal is to figure out not, not only is, is that work going to happen, but then what do we do for the rest of the village, and how do we turn it back into, uh, again, a pedestrian-friendly village that allows us to take advantage of the new um, in, district in a, zoning. And a couple of aspects of this that will happen is we're actually going to include a six-foot-wide bike path. And it's important because right now there's a disconnect in that Appenog section in the Work Bicycle Network. This will solve that problem with that new bike connectivity sustainability. We're also going to try to weave back toward the seaport, the historic seaport of the 18th century. What we're also trying to do as part of the comprehensive planning is recapture the old, you know, uh, mill building and use that as a civic center, the Sawtooth Building. The Appenine Company goes back to the 19th century industrial textile as that was a center of employment for the city of Warwick. It had its ups and downs, but if we can recapture that and have a civic center, a civic plaza, that's what we're hearing in these comprehensive plan meetings when we get out with people. And when we talk about sustainability and green, obviously recapturing old buildings, one of the things we've talked Absolutely. about on this show Adaptive is, is the, the lack of a, an investment tax credit right now, right. historic tax credit, that obviously helped with a lot of other projects. As we talk, though, about the city's evolution and hopefully future into a more sustainable model, do you look at 
buildings there in Appenog, here around the airport, and look at can you remodel them differently? Can you change with renewable yeah, energy? Sure. Can you change with waste? What What is part of this plan that might be different than it was back in the early 1900s? Well, I think you need to take stock of what we already have and what we've tried to do. Um, you know, and when, when I look back to one of my first years on the council when um, Governor Chavey was first the mayor, and we talked about recycling. I mean, that's not all that long ago that we were putting together a recycling program in the city. Um, and now we're talking about roof gardens at City Hall, and you know, uh, we, we, it has now expanded to the point where um, Warwick is, in fact, Kurt Spaulding, I believe, last mm -hmm. year, uh, referred to Warwick as one of the greenest communities in all of New England. Well, I know you've always had a great recycling mm -hmm. rate. Yes. Do you actually have a, and we're going to go to a break, but do you have a green team in place, and do you have a sustainability director? We do. We you actually do. do. Yeah. We're actually changing the amend, I know we have to go to break, but uh, we're actually uh, amending our comprehensive plan to have a whole sustainability element. Look for LEED certification right. as part of the design manual, new construction, and one of the recommendations is sustainability coordinator we're working with the mayor to actually establish that. So that green team is definitely oh, we love going to that. That is terrific. We'll be right back. can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Damn, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take home. promising high schoolers on a college tour there, dark to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a 600-pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house, it's a delivery, it's a truck. No, son, that's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award-winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800-343-3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. Thanks for staying with us. Again, I know you have a lot going on. You have a lot of assets, a lot of things that you have to manage in the city. One of the things that's clear as we look back at the history is this was one of the real summer spots, not only here in Rhode Island, but on East Coast, maybe in the country. You still have some beautiful places, beautiful shorelines. How important is that to, to this city and what you do now and what you're going to do going forward? Well, one of the things we've tried to impress upon people is we are the second largest um, city in the state, uh, and with that we have a designation as a city, not necessarily as a rural area, but uh, we have a collection of villages that people still call home. If you ask most people where they live in this city, they won't say that they live in the city of Warwick. They basically say, I live in Patuxent or Greenwood or Appenog or Hoxie. Um, so there's still that small town feel, but we also have 39 miles of coastline um, here in the city. Uh, including a full mile that we just acquired with the help of DEM and NOAA several years ago to reopen uh, a portion of the Rocky Point Amusement Park uh, for public access. And uh, it's one of the only um, places where a, a community has been able to buy a, buy a full mile of coastline um, to leave in, in, in the public access uh, domain um, in years in, in New England. So it's there's, a lot of po there's a lot of real positive things that go on here that we don't necessarily um, sell all that well. But is part of the is part of the challenge though that you not, not only have to preserve it but possibly either develop it or not develop it? How do you handle your 39 miles of coastline? What do you do with it? How do you make sure it doesn't get destroyed or not overdeveloped? It, 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 it's a real juggling act. You know, some of the things that we've worked on is we did uh, a special plan for Greenwich Bay. Mm -hmm and talked about w what are the capacities here, how many slips should there be, you know, are we going to be, uh, have an overabundance of 
um, boating in, in that area and how do you balance that out and, and in fact we actually in, enacted some very stringent and very rigid water quality standards coming out of that work. So it is a balancing act and, right. and, and Bill's department has to do that. They have to look at what is best for the, for the greater number of people in our community. Right. I think quantitatively I think you can put a number to it. I think it's some 289 acres that were purchased or have some kind of control from the city as a mechanism in which to control development. So when we look at the statewide planning, you know, plan for growth centers and, and land use 2025, we're doing it in the city. What we've done is we've selected those areas that have already been built, there's already been assets and resources directed toward those, and we're, you know, viable redevelopment. And those areas that are pristine, we're keeping open. And the list is long, 289, together with Garden Park, like it's 30% of our total uh, and, if you, and if you look at a map, if, if you look at the map that planning has put together on our open space, and you see how basically we've created a green belt around the entire community, mm -hmm. you add to that the 39 miles of coastline, and that's your quality of life. And right. when, when you talk about sustainability, to me, yeah, we can talk about how much money does it save, um, how much better is it for the environment, but really what you're talking about is quality of life, and you're giving people a reason that they want to live here, that mm -hmm. you're giving people a reason that they want to move here, Absolutely, um, sure. that they want to visit here. And it, that's uh, a big part of the economy. Uh, Absolutely. Obviously, that's right? a big it part is. of the economy. And a lot of what you've done still creates jobs, right? There's jobs out Absolutely. of the bay. There's sure. jobs out of those parks. Absolutely. So, so that's all good. One question that comes up a lot mm -hmm. is, Bald Hill Road you mentioned. Absolutely. Uh, can you make any changes there? Absolutely. We have identified Bald Hill Road in this upper comprehensive plan rewrite as a model area. What we want to do is we want to turn it upside down. We want to make it a green model, whether it's green roofs, whether it's okay. electric vehicle stations. We want to give density bonuses, bonuses to bring those resources back up into something that we can be proud of. Many people don't know that just a half mile west of the Ball Hill Road corridor is Dolly Farm, 64 mm. acres. Absolutely. I mean, talking the connections, connecting nodes, and turning Route 2 upside down in this comprehensive plan is something the mayor directed the, our department doing, and we're doing it right now with Rudy Clancy, and when one you, of the consultants. And when you see changes that have happened in the last few years to that area, you'll see more of a, a desire to have fewer curb cuts and instead say to a, someone who wants to redevelop their property, we, we will approve your redevelopment plan, but this is what we're looking at. We want you to create one access point and one exit point and then move people around inside of your property in a different way so that once they're on your property, they're there. They're, they're not making right. mu multiple um, exits and egresses uh, onto Route 5 or Route 2, and that allows them to then better landscape it, to turn it around and make it look better, uh, and to have better traffic flow and, and better traffic control. Which has a lot to do with rainwater yeah. and all that. And that's moreover, cool. that is sure. drainage too. Sam's Club, the redevelopment of Sam's Club is yep. a good example of that, where, where the existing conditions serve as stormwater runoff onto into the budding wetlands where was drastically improved with the right. new detention and infiltration and, and low impact uh, development uh, that occurred on the site. And when, and when you look at what Penske did when they took over Inskip, they, there were nine entrances and exits on Route 5 and Route 2. And they turned around and said, okay, we're going to have one, and we're going to be able to better landscape it, control it, make it look better, and that really does improve the quality of life in a neighborhood. It does. You'll be back with me in the last segment, segment and we're going to talk about really, if it all comes to fruition, what will Warwick look like in 10 years? Bill, we're going to get a chance to ask you in a future segment as well. But in the meantime, I'll be back with some closing thoughts. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a 600-pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house, it's a delivery, it's a truck. No, son, that's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group, sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award-winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800-343-3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's going to get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. 
<laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com. Nature's Rest, New England's most popular latex brand, is now exclusively at all Cardi's Furniture and Cardi's Furniture Mattress locations. Nature's Rest eco-friendly construction includes a plant-based poly support core with carbon negative wood foundation base. Latex is the Earth's best natural resource for sleep, and Nature's Rest mattresses are proven to provide superior pressure relief to give you a more restful, rejuvenating night's sleep. Cardi's Furniture and Cardi's Furniture Mattresses. Interesting that Warwick's planning director has been in office longer than its current mayor and worked there when now Governor Chafee was mayor of Warwick. Interesting, too, that some of the projects the city is working on now go all the way back to the Chafee administration. Being the state's second largest city clearly has some advantages. It easily accommodates the region's airport and the congestion that it creates. A great deal of state and federal money flow in for projects. The business mix is large and diverse, and outside of the commercial zones, there remains prime land for farming or preservation. The mayor can carry a fairly large administration and fill it with some talented people. Over the next few shows, we'll take a closer look at the many projects going on in Warwick many of which we touched on here with the mayor and the planning director, and we'll take a very interesting look at how this whole area has dug out of the floods that just a few years ago had buildings submerged underwater and businesses totally shut down. Next week, we bring back Bill DePasquale and team him up with acting airport director Peter Frazier as we go behind and in front of the scenes of Green State Airport and the surrounding Station District. I'm Peter Arpin for Renewable Now, the show and the tour that bring you the business side of Green. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a 600-pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house, it's a delivery, it's a truck. No, son, that's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group, sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award-winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800-343-3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's going to get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com.